it's that time again for the uh, video I said I was going to do with the uh, tying the center of effort of the sail to the uh, center of lateral resistance on the hull so I know where to put the uh, dagger board trunk in relationship to the uh, uh, center of effort of the sail. Uh, but first I had to find out where that center seat was going to be so that it would be easier to place uh, to balance out the hull and to place the dagger board in the seat area. And this one seems like it's going to come out a little bit better than my uh, O&P pod as far as the location. I'll be able to get the uh, dagger board trunk inside of the, uh, the seat itself. Um, I'm going to go to a longer, narrower, instead of a 12 inch, I'm going to go to a 10 inch uh, by about two and a half foot deep exposed area of the uh, dagger board on this hull. Uh, I've got my sail set up. It's a 64 square foot sail that I helped design with uh, Bob Patterson back at Neil Pride Sales. And if you go to neilpridesales.com, uh, I believe it is, uh, and go into the store, you'll find where you can be able to buy this sail. It's a really nice sail, reasonably, excellently well made, and at a very reasonable price. Okay, I got that up. I've got my half hole uh, from one of the models, one of the last, uh, maybe second to the last model I cut in half. And, uh, and sometimes that's a little pain in order to get the hull to come out right, the right shape. So I've got it, what I like, and uh, I've also got an artif artificial uh, horizon here, which is my water line. And we know from the, uh, the last video that when the boat is setting at rest without anybody in it, that the uh, aft water line was where the V touches the water, and the front water line of the hull was where the... Uh, um, two panels up here come together. So I've got that set in. So now what I have to do is I need to make a piece for my um, um, what my exposed area cross section is going to be. This is kind of an old way to do it. I don't have the fancy computer programs because they, they tell me you know some of the stuff online will give you a water line and all that kind of stuff but it doesn't and then it just spits out some uh, uh, stations and offsets and eights and that kind of stuff. And I don't like to build boats that way. I want you to be able to lay out the panels, cut them out, and after all my model work and my computer time, you have a fully formed hull without a lot of, with no forms to make. So, let me uh, stop for a second and get this installed so that everything doesn't fall off. Okay, I've got the part now that I'm going to uh, cut out. And I've got an arrow here which marks the, uh, on this piece, which marks the very center of where I, pardon me, have the seat set up. So I remember last time the center of the middle seat was five and a half feet back from the, uh, the stern uh, panel. Uh, so I've got that marked here and it comes in pretty close. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out the underwater cross section of the hull and that will get me how much hull is under the water. Now, some people will, designers will add in the rudder, uh, some don't. I'm uh, one of the don't kind. I just go with the underwater shape and then I add on the uh, dagger board at full extension for to get my balance point. Uh, I find that uh, the rudder should be what it does, a rudder. It shouldn't be used as part of the lateral resistance. The hull and the placement of everything else should make the boat track in the water where it's supposed to be. The rudder just gives you like the steering wheel. The steering wheel does not affect the way your car goes down the road other than which direction. So I don't use any of the rudder as an extra tire to keep me on the road. So let me um, stop and cut this out and then I'll attach my preliminary place where I'm going to put the dagger board. Well, a little before I cut it out, let me show you. I've got the line here which is basically the underbody of, of the hull that's going to be exposed in the water. Let me cut it out now. Okay, I've got my bottom panel cut out. I've added my dagger board to where I think... Let me stick it up here. Yeah, I've added my dagger board to where I think it's going to be. Now these marks right here, uh, you might be able to see them, but that's where the seat is in relationship to where the stern the uh, front and back edge of the seat. Uh, my seats will always have a taper in them uh, so the actual bottom would be wider than the 12 inch on top. Uh, I may have to make this middle seat a uh, 14 inch seat uh, just to get some extra width in there for the way I build it. I'll find out when I actually build the boat whether or not because uh, I'm still going to go with the 10 inch uh, dagger board but I'm going I may need some extra width in the seat uh, an inch either side, maybe from a 12 to a 14 inch seat 
uh, in order to get the daggerboard trunk to fit inside the perimeter. But we'll see that when we build the boat. So, okay, I've got my. I always like to have my my dagger board within the seat. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way, and I'll have to build like in the OMP pod. If you go to the uh, flickercom slash boats or no, let's see what is that? Flicker photos OMP pod. Uh, you will find uh, I had to make a little projection out of the front in order to get the dagger board kicked out about six inches ahead of the center of the seat. So I've got this set up to where I want going to be. And uh, I've got it to where it'll fit up underneath in the hull. So now all I had to do, and I found a couple places that uh, were going to be, uh, I stick my pin in, uh, but this will, it's too late. Pardon me. Uh, it was too heavy in the, in the stern, so I brought it back originally, but then the dagger board kind of wants to sag down on me. So I dropped it down to this point. So she sets pretty flat and oh, lost my sail. Pretty flat. So then I'll go ahead and push that point on through. And then I'll mark it as this point is my center of lateral resistance on this hull with this underbody. Put my sail back in position again here. Okay, so now I know where that part is, and so I shall stick it back up in place. And let me readjust this hole. Okay, now I want to make certain. Now I know where the center of lateral resistance is. I want to combine it with my center of effort on the sail. And I know where the center of effort of the sail is right here from what uh, uh, myself and Bob Patterson and Neil Pride have figured out on the sail. So I'm going to extend that projection on down through the hull with this little yellow uh, ray, uh, ruler. And I can measure from my center of lateral resistance pin. I'll come in closer on this to my... Uh, Center of effort, center of lateral resistance, and I like to have about a six inch lead on the CE over the uh, center of lateral resistance. Some people put it right on, but I've had good luck at six inches or less. It's probably going to be about four or five. That gives me, now that I have that set up, I know where to put my mast. So now I can mast, put off the mast, or mark the mast at Nine feet, nine feet three inches from the stern is where I'll have the center of the mast. So now that part of the design is finished. Now I can go ahead and figure it out as I build the prototype where everything goes. So I hope this has been instructive, but you'll have an idea of what I'm doing uh, when I talk about where the seat went and where the mast partner goes and all that. This is everything I've done to design this hull and to get it to where it's going to sail fine. Uh, I think it's going to be a really nice little boat. Uh, uh, until then, uh, we start building the hull uh, and all the um, scarfing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, see you. A scale model of the sail that I helped design with uh, Bob Patterson. <laughs> at Neil Pride Sales. Let me get this stuff stuck in again. Normally I do this on my cork board in my house, but it's too dark in there, so let me come back and set this up again.